Hello and welcome back to this video. And now we'd like to add a new model. So I've opened up the complete new Power BI report here and we'd like to add new data because the last data was interesting to explore how we can set up a model structure. However, the data itself was not too interesting to us because all the products were named product one to product 101 and location ID was named the same and so on. So to understand how to set up a model, that was great. But now let's actually switch to a data set which gives us more information and more things we can slice and dice on. So uh, what I do is I simply go to get data here and then I go to Excel. Of course, you can also click on Excel here directly or click on Excel here, totally up to you. So if I go Excel here like that, then I can switch to, in this case, PBI training number two. I can select it, I click on open, and then I simply wait until the data gets connected to my Power BI report here and we see that we got the navigator window so good practice for us we can train it one more time and then we can see there is the data we have and by the way if you want to follow along which i hope then simply download this report from the resource section okay so you can see that we got exactly employees orders and suppliers and though that's fine if you want to check out the underlying data simply open the excel file now we also get our table structure here and we know that the difference between those sheet icons and those icons here is simply that these are referring to tables and simply tabelle one and simply means is the table in German. So I have not named the tables properly, but we can use them for importing the data. And I said at the beginning in, in the class that I personally think that importing tables is best practice because this ensures that we only import the data from the table itself and avoid importing additional unnecessary data which might be also on the sheet. Also if something changes on the sheet we make sure still we have only the data within the table itself imported. So if this is an option for you I would always go with the tables even though they are not named properly here. So what I like to do is I like to highlight my tables so either click on the first one and also highlight the other ones. So I've selected the tables you get a preview of the data in case the underlying data says changes in, in the meantime simply click on this refresh button just to see the latest changes. So then instead of clicking on load and I know I still don't know the reason why Power BI is highlighting the load in yellow and the transformed data in white but what I actually always like to do is first go to transform data because you can of course also click on load to load the data first and then go under the query editor up here to transform data and you still can get into the query editor. But the behavior is still not the same because if you first load the data and then you transform it like that, then you already have loaded the data into the model. But if you go to transform here directly instead of clicking on load first, then you creating the connection to the underlying data, the data gets put into Power Query so we can work with it, but still the data is not imported yet into the model. So at least from my point of view, there is a difference. That is why I would actually um, love if Power BI would not highlight the load, but instead uh, keeping either both white or also highlight the transform here in yellow. But that's my personal opinion. So um, enough said for that. Click on Transform Data. And uh, here I already have set up the dates table code which we use in a minute, but let's actually first explore the data itself. So we can see we got three tables here. And the first one, as you can imagine here, is named supplier ID, supplier name, and country. So this obviously is referring to supplier. So that is why I'd like to go inside here and rename this table properly. So I simply name this supplier, supplier, okay? And of sometimes people like to use uh, an abbreviation like supplier TBL. So let's actually go with this one here, okay? This time I name it supplier TBL simply an abbreviation for the supplier table. Now, I simply check the data types, also something you always want to do. So supplier ID is a number, that's fine. Supplier name is a text, that's also fine. And country is currently an ABC, so a text, also fine, right? So that looks fine for us, everything's okay. And just in case you want to rename a specific country, you know that Power Query works, um, or Power BI itself here works column-based, You can, but you can simply select it and then go under replace values and replace the values. Right? For instance, say, well, there's USA, but I'd like to have US here. Then you can go to replace values, search for USA, and then replace it with US. Right? Could be an option for you. Or other kind of uh, fields you want to modify. You can do that. For us now, I think this table is okay. That's fine. And also, the table is small, so we can see that there's no missing data. But if in case your table is bigger, you always have the option to have a look at the little green bar up there. And if you hover over it, it gives you additional information. There are only valid values. There are no errors. So that's fine. So then we check out the next table, which is the table number two, which is the employees table. 
In the employees table, he has here an employee ID, an employee name, employee surname, office country, and office team. So that also looks fine for me. And also the data type here is always text. That's also fine. And the employee ID itself is, again, a number, so a numerical field. That's fine. All I want to change here is actually the table number two. I highlight it here, and then the name, I simply switch this back and say this is also now the employee. And I stick to my naming convention and simply type in TBL. Employee TBL, press enter, and you can see that it's also renamed in here. Now the last table in the model, if you'll go to tabella number one, is now this one here, and this one is the orders table. Or you can also name it sales table if you want. In my case, I'm going with orders. So I rename it already and say here, this is orders and then TBL, to, just to be consistent here. Press enter, and you can see down there that we have renamed it. Now let's check also out the different kinds of columns we have inside. Now we have an order date, that's an ID, that's fine. Also we have customer ID, okay, product ID, employee ID. So the employee ID is also a numerical field, that's good and also important because we want to link this field here to the employees table, and there the employee ID was also a numerical field. So the data type is the same, and also that works. So then we check out the order date, which is a proper date. You can see that in the format here, that's also fine. You can also see the calendar icon. Now what about the ship date? Well, the ship date, you can currently see it's specified as the year, then month, and then day level. But currently it's converted here as a one, two, three. So obviously uh, Power BI is treating this as a number, as a whole number, but not as a date. So obviously something is wrong here, at least for me. Again, this might uh, might be different for you depending on the regional settings. I want to mention this here because maybe the date already was converted properly for you. Sometimes this really depends on the regional settings. But just in case you get exactly the same issue as I have here. Then what you can try is, you can click on this one here, and then you simply say, I would like to switch this to a date. So if you do this, you will see an additional window here which asks you, do you want to change the column type? And then you can specify, do you want to replace the current step or add a new step? The reason why this window appears like that is because if you take a look at the query here at the applied steps window, the last step which was automatically done for Power BI when it, we imported the data into the Power Query editor here was it changed the type. And if I replace the current app, then the replacement, the data replacement we do here is also part of this change step, uh, change type step here. This is not what I want and I would recommend that you would always go with a new step because if your step fails, if you do something and you want to then get rid of the step, if if you have an additional step, like we do here, if I click on add new step, you can see that now I get an error here, which appeared for me at least, and now if I want to go back, I simply can click on this cross symbol here to have my original data back. If I would, on the other hand, change the existing step, this one here, then and re would remove this one, you see that then we would at, be at the navigation step. But this means, as you can see here, that none of our column headers would have the correct data type. And this means if we would have to delete this step, the change type here, then we would have to manually go through each column individually and also uh, adjust here the specific data type it is. So we would actually start from navigation. And this is not what I want. This is why I want to, I want like to keep the step separate and then based on this step, I like to add additional steps. And if I make some errors, then I can always remove my steps, which I have done. Also best practice, at least from my point of view. So I go with the ship date, I select it one more time, and I'm showing you a little trick. What you do is, or you can do if you get this kind of behavior, that if you convert it into a date, you get an issue. You can at first try to convert the, in this case, this numerical field into a text. So this would be my first step to do that. If I convert this into a text, again, I will be asked, do I want to replace the step which we have here, or do I want to add a new step? Again, I do not understand why this is highlighted. I mean, yeah, if you click on it, you would uh, reduce the amount of steps you have here in this window, but still, I like to go with a new step, just to make sure that I don't run into issues which I cannot revert then. So I go in here, and I have now my dates as text, as ABC text type. So that's fine, and you can see that currently it's now left aligned, but that's fine. I have no errors, as I had before. And now I will try to convert this into a date. And what I do is I click on this, and instead of using the date here directly, I can try that, I can click on it, also add a new step, but you see that now it works for me, okay? So for some reason, uh, this is interesting, but I had to first convert it into a text, and then from the text, I was able to convert it into a date. 
Now, if this also doesn't work for you, then of course there's another trick for that, which you already know, you've learned this in the first model which we've set up. You can always go under the option here and choose one of the best features, at least from my point of view, which is available in Power BI, especially if you have to, if you have to deal with data from different countries, where certain kinds of, for instance, states are formatted differently or numbers are formatted differently, then you have the option to click on that and then choose the using local. And using local allows you then to specify not only the type which you want to convert to, but also then the specific local information. So if it's French related or here uh, Georgian or Germany or uh, English, then you can choose for any kind of translation here in this case what exists here and choose a specific format. And this actually is the best option to ensure that you convert it into a proper format. For now, I'm fine because it works for me here, as you can see here, so that's why I click cancel. But I'd like to highlight this one more time because I personally think this is a really awesome option, this using local here. Um, so well, just in case it didn't work for you, go with the using local, otherwise do the same trick as I did. So convert it first from number into a text, as we have done, for, so from was a number here and we convert it into a text, and after that we were able to convert it from text into date. So that worked for me, at least, okay? So that is that. Let's actually take a look at the other columns. So we got ship mode, sales, standard price. These are all decimal numbers, so that's fine. That's totally fine here. And also the other ones also look fine to me, okay? I can see that for the zip code here, uh, there's a few data missing simply because, well, they are not available. If you go in here, you can see there are null entries. We can filter that just to see what this is. And then we would see a few customers here. Um, in this case, this Patrick McKenna here. Obviously, we have only one customer here this one here, who has simply um, no entries considering the customer zip code. And this is something then we can go to the specific department, which is relate, uh, well, um, or responsible for this customer, and then ask them to fill in the data. So also something which is helpful just to explore the data by simply um, taking a look at the specific well, columns and analyze them. Now this is the first step, of course. Take a look at the data you have, take your time, just to make sure that you have exactly the same data, the, the right data you want, and also um, that you have the right data types you want. Now, beside this, I think there's no additional things which you need to prepare here. Beside one last thing, we know that when we want to create time intelligence functions, and we will use a few of them, then we need our dates table. That is why we go to home, and under home in a query editor, we go to new source, new source, click on blank query. You now know this trick, and then you go to the advanced editor. So click on advanced editor here, just to have a bigger window. You can also paste the code directly in here, in this FX formula bar, but I personally like to have it in this window. So then let's actually open our uh, date code here, the M code, and this is the same one as from the first video. And as I said before, use this code for all your future DAX um, Power BI models and DAX calculations. You can use it if you want. Of course, you can use your own one as well, but um, you don't need to reinvent the wheel, right? So I can highlight it, control C to copy it, then I go to the query editor here and I paste it inside. And you can see no syntax errors, so far so good, and I click on done, and this allows us to create our formula here. And for a fact, I know, of course you can also go to the table here directly and look it up, but I know that the order table contains data from 2019, and click on load up to 2021. If I scroll down, I can see 21 data in here, so that is why I need those three years. So I go to my query setting here, and then I say I start with the first, first of January in 2019 here, and my last date will be the last date, so 31st of December in 2021. And my financial year start month, again, I'm going with the January, but in case you have other financial start months on your company, then of course you can adjust this if you want. Holidays, I don't have holiday uh, calendar imported, that's why I can't refer to a specific column of a, another table, so I leave this blank, and I click on Invoke. So I invoke the function and I got my dates table here with all the columns, the same dates table as we had before in the other model, right? So I got my dates table with all the columns and then finally I want to rename this. So I name this properly and say this is my dates TBL, just to be consistent here. I press enter and I got all my tables in here. And of course now I could also right click here and create a group, but since I want to import all the tables, so all four of them, I don't think that's necessary. That's why I keep it like that, but you can do it if you want. Finally, you click on close and apply, close and apply here, and then we simply wait uh, in here until our data gets loaded and we can see our tables in the field list. Okay, it's connecting, you can see it's importing the data, it's detecting relationships, and we got our fields inside. And then one last thing, which I like to do here, I like to go to the modeling view because it's an important aspect here 
just to make sure that our data is set up correctly. And here you can see we got our orders table. We can drag this to the bottom, what I personally like, prefer here in the view. I drag my suppliers table up there. I drag my employees table up there. And I had to upgrade here now to the new view. You probably have in the future this new view automatically enabled. And finally, I need to drag my dates table in here and also connect my dates table to my orders table. And there's an order date here. There's a date here. So I can simply use this and drag and drop it on my orders date here in my employees table. So I also connect those two tables. Okay. And this actually is then the setup of my model. I have my facts table, I have my dimension tables, and all these tables are correctly linked between the two. So this one is probably a little bit further at the bottom. Uh, supply ID is here, so if I hover it one more time, now I can see they are currently selected the right ones. And the same is true for the employee table. Okay, So that's fine, and I have my model set up, and now we can dive deeper into visualizations, into DAX calculations, and so on. So hopefully you're excited to do that, and we will do that together in the next video. Until then, Best guys.